All right, guys, so we get about four problems here, and let's get started. It says, 55-year-old uh, man visits his primary care physician with a complaint of urinary frequency. Examination finds one centimeter nodule on his prostate gland. The physician orders a prostate-specific candidate serum test. By common standards, the PSY level greater than four is considered abnormal. Using the standard test, using the standard, uh, this test has a sensitivity of 80% and a specificity of 90. A recently published ep epidemiological article found that this cross-sectional study, 10% of the men of this age have prostate cancer. The result of the PSA of the patient's PSA is 7. What is your best estimate of the likelihood that this man actually has prostate cancer? So they're saying that the guy actually has a positive uh, PSA. So the test is positive, and they're saying, what is your best estimate that, it, that the guy actually has prostate cancer? So they're asking positive predictive value. Now, anytime they, you see a problem with positive predictive value, negative predictive value, or sensitivity specificity, I want you to draw the box. And then I want you to label it. Reality, positive negative, and the test, positive negative. Now we just got to fill in the box. Now they're asking for positive predictive value. Now we know positive predictive value is top left going to the right. So we got we to gotta figure just really these two boxes, and then we're home free. So what I'd recommend, go ahead and label these anything you want, A, B, C, and D. And then what do we know? Well, we know the sensitivity is 80%. So actually this box going down would be 80% or 0.8. And that would be A over A plus C. Um, and, then, and then it says specificity is, point, is 90% or 0.9. Well, we know that is D going this way. So that would be D over D plus B. And then what else do we know? It says 10% uh, of men of this age have prostate cancer. So in reality, 10% of the men already have it. So if 10% have it, then how many don't? Well, that's just what's left, 0.9. So in theory, uh, 0.1 equals A plus C, right? Because that's how many people have the disease. That's the entire column. So we would have 0.8 equals uh, point, uh, one on bottom. So it's A over 0.1. Now, let's just go ahead and solve for A, and it's uh, 0.8 times uh, 0.1, which would give us a 0 0.08. So A equals 0 0.08. Now we're halfway there, right? We just got to get what B is, and then we'll have our positive predictive formula, which is what, right? Positive predictive value is top left, which would be A over the two boxes going to the right, A plus B. Now, we know that 0 0.9 is going to be uh, B plus D, right? It's the entire column. And so we put that there, and then that would give us D. And so we know that uh, D is going to be 0.81. Well, if D is 0.81, then D plus B must equal 0.9. So that's got to be 0.09. So now we have everything we need, right? We'll have positive values A, which is 0 0.08, over A plus B, which is 0 0.08. Uh, 8 plus 0 0.09, so now we have 0 0.08 over 0 0.17, uh, and then we should do uh, basically 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.17, move the decimal spot 2, that would give us right here, and then we'd have to say, um, let me see, 8, 2, 28, 29, 30, um, I always get this messed, so it's 8 and then 2, that'd be a 6, I'm sorry. Uh, and then 2, 1, uh, 0, and that would give 9, and 4 is 11, right? So it gets us right about there. So we're looking at 0.47 or 47%. The key with this one is very long problem, but you had to know that you're looking for the positive predictive value. And when you're looking for that, draw your box. If you draw your box, they got to give you this stuff in the middle just to fill it out, and then you should have it home free. All right. This one says, a 50-year-old pre male presents to the office for a routine health check. Managing his weight has been his, focus, has been his focus at this time to improve his overall health. The doctor discusses his weight loss goals and overall health benefit from weight loss, including better blood pressure, management, blah, 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 blah. The national average weight for males is, uh, for between 15 and 59, is uh, 90 kilos or 200 pounds with a standard deviation of... Uh, 27 so one standard deviation equals 27 kilos uh, what would be the most likely expected value if his weight had two standard deviations well this is like a no-brainer right if the if the mean or the average is 200 pounds well one standard deviation is just going to be an extra 60 right so that's so one standard deviation 
is going to be 260, and then so the two standard deviations, uh, you know, is going to be 320. So two standard deviations is going to be 320. Okay, pretty easy on that one. All right, this one. Uh, so again, long problem. Uh, looks like they're, they got the whole box thing going for you. At least they were nice enough to draw it out. Specificity for breast examination is traditionally rather traditionally rather high among community practitioners. If a, if a team of new researchers set forth a goal to increase the specificity in detection of breast cancer from the previously reported national average of 74, based on the following results, has the team achieved their goal? So they're saying that this is the old, um, say, baseline or whatever you want to call it. They're saying, well, did they meet their goal of getting better than that? Well, if they're telling us this is their results, and we're looking for specificity, we know specificity is going to be the bottom uh, right going up. So then we'll have 23 over 23 plus uh, 5. So then we got 23 over uh, 28. And then we go 23 divided by 28. We would get um, point, let me see, 8. 4, 6, 16, um, let me say that, 16 and 6, 22, um, and go down, uh, and that's going to be 1, 6, zero, one six zero, and that would give us a 2, so that would give us 0.82, so the new specificity is going to be, uh, so let me say new specificity is going to be 0.82, the old one is 0.74, so yeah, they increased it, so it's a yes, they increased it, and they've achieved it with an increase of, what's the difference between uh, 0.82 and uh, 74? It's gonna be 8%, right? So answer choice uh, B. But again, just know how to get all your information from the box. They're gonna give you one of these things. It's either gonna be sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, or negative predictive value. It's all right there in the box. Now, this one's just kind of a review from those old videos, uh, catching a lot of uh, flack from it. Uh, so hopefully this, is, this will clarify what I was trying to get across. Scatter plot, all that kind of stuff. We're looking for the correlation coefficient, essentially. Um, and long story short, the correlation to the test scores, okay, the correlation between these test scores is most indicative of which one of these, okay? Well, long story short, um, you know, you just want to draw a line that matches where these things trend, right? Well, this one obviously trends in this direction, okay? And that's in the negative, okay? That's in the negative direction, right? And that's, that's the old high school, uh, middle school math. If it trended upward, you know, that would be in the positive direction. And if it goes in the down direction like this, uh, left, right, it's in the negative. Now, the real question is, if the dots are way away from the line, then it's going to be more of a smaller number. Now, when I say smaller number, these things are only going to go between essentially, say, say 0 and 1. So if, if they're far away from that line, it's going to be, say, like a 0 0.2, a 0.3. But if they're really tight, right on that line, that's going to be a positive one, but it's, be it's going to be closer to one, okay? That's what you really have to know from this. My old point was, look, if it goes in that direction, it's positive. If it goes down, it's going to be a negative, okay? Well, this one obviously goes down, so we know it's going to be a negative number. Uh, but then, but are these dots right, are they tight along the line? No, they're not tight along the line. They were real if they were really tight along this line, it would be a negative one. But these guys are far away from the line, therefore it's going to be a much, like, say, smaller number, such as negative point, uh, uh, point 0.20. Okay? But the key is, if it goes up like this, it's going to be a positive number. And if, again, if they're tight on the line, it's going to be closer to 1. If they're way apart from the line, you're going to give it a positive number that's going to be a lot smaller. Okay? Same thing holds if it goes in that direction. Hope this helped, guys.